Avril Ramona Levine, born September 27, 1984, is a Canadian singer-songwriter. She is considered a key musician in the development of pop-punk music, as she paved the way for female-driven, punk-influenced pop music in the early 2000s. Her accolades include eight Grammy Award nominations. At age 16, Levine signed a two-album recording contract with Arista Records. Her debut studio album, Let Go, 2002, is the best-selling album of the 21st century by a Canadian artist. It yielded the successful singles Complicated and Skater Boy, which emphasized a skate-punk persona and earned her the title pop-punk queen from music publications. Her second studio album, Under My Skin, 2004, became Levine's first album to reach the top of the Billboard 200 chart in the United States, going on to sell 10 million copies worldwide. Levine's third studio album, The Best Damn Thing, 2007, reached number one in seven countries worldwide and saw the international success of its lead single Girlfriend, which became her first single to reach the top of the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States. Her next two studio albums, Goodbye Lullaby, 2011, and Avril Lavigne, 2013, saw continued commercial success and were both certified gold in Canada, the United States, and other territories, after releasing her sixth studio album, Head Above Water, 2019, she returned to her punk roots with her seventh studio album, Love Sucks, 2022. Early Life Avril Ramona Levine was born on September 27, 1984, in Belleville, Ontario. She was named Avril, the French word for April, by her father. He and Levine's mother recognized their child's vocal abilities when she was two years old and sang Jesus Loves Me on the way home from church. Levine has an older brother named Matthew and a younger sister named Michelle, both of whom teased her when she sang. My brother used to knock on the wall because I used to sing myself to sleep and he thought it was really annoying. She is the sister-in-law of Japanese band 1OK rock bassist Ryota Kohama. Levine's paternal grandfather, Maurice Yves Levine, was born in St. Jerome, Quebec. A member of the Royal Canadian Air Force, he married Lucie Ziers Bicky, a French native of Morange in 1953. Their son, Jean-Claude Levine, was born in 1954 at RCAF Station Grostenquin near Grostenquin, Lorraine. When Jean-Claude was a child, the family moved to Ontario and in 1975, he married Judith Roseanne Judy Los Ha. When Levine was five, the family moved to Napanee, now incorporated as Greater Napanee, a town with a population of approximately 5,000 at the time. Also when she was five, she was diagnosed with ADHD, which caused her problems during her school years. To support her musical interests, her father bought her a microphone, a drum kit, a keyboard, and several guitars, and converted their basement into a studio. Her father often played bass at the church the family attended, the Third Day Worship Center, in Kingston. When Levine was 14 years old, her parents took her to karaoke sessions. Levine performed at country fairs, singing songs by Garth Brooks, The Chicks, and Shania Twain, and began writing her own songs. Her first song was called Can't Stop Thinking About You, about a teenage crush, which she described as cheesy cute. Levine also played hockey during high school and won MVP twice as a right winger in a boys' league. Career 1999-2001, Career Beginnings In 1999, Levine won a radio contest to perform with Canadian singer Shania Twain at the Carell Centre in Ottawa, before an audience of 20,000 people. Twain and Levine sang Twain's song, What Made You Say That?, and Levine told Twain that she aspired to be a famous singer. During a performance with the Lennox Community Theatre, Levine was spotted by local folk singer Stephen Med. He invited her to contribute vocals on his song, Touch the Sky, for his 1999 album, Can't Spirit. She later sang on Temple of Life and Two Rivers for his follow-up album, My Window to You, in 2000. In December 1999, Levine was discovered by her first professional manager, Cliff Fabry, while singing country covers at a chapter's bookstore in Kingston, Fabry sent out VHS tapes of Levine's home performances to several industry prospects, and Levine was visited by several executives. Mark Jowett, co-founder of a Canadian management firm, Network, received a copy of Levine's karaoke performances recorded in her parents' basement. Jowett arranged for Levine to work with producer Peter Zizzo. During the summer of 2000 in New York, where she wrote the song Why? 
Levine was noticed by Arista Records during a trip to New York. In November 2000, Ken Cronard, an ANR representative, invited Antonio L.A. Reed, then head of Arista Records, to Zizzo's Manhattan studio to hear Levine sing. Her 15 minute audition so impressed Reed that he immediately signed her to Arista with a deal worth $1.25 million for two albums and an extra $900,000 for a publishing advance. BY this time, Levine had found that she fit in naturally with her hometown high school skater clique an image that carried through to her first album, but although she enjoyed skateboarding, school left her feeling insecure. Having signed a record deal, and with support from her parents, she left school to focus on her music career. Levine's band, which were mostly the members of Closet Monster, was chosen by Network, as they wanted young performers who were up and coming from the Canadian punk rock scene who would fit with Levine's personality. 2002-2003, Let Go Levine performing in 2002. Reed gave ANR Joshua Sarabin the responsibility of overseeing Levine's development and the recording of her debut album. They spent several months in New York working with different co writers, trying to forge an individual sound for her. Sarabin told Hitquarters that they initially struggled, although early collaborations with songwriter producers, including Sibel Breer, Kurt Frasca, and Peter Zizzo, resulted in some good songs, they did not match her or her voice. It was only when Levine went to Los Angeles in May 2001 and created two songs with the Matrix production team including Complicated, later released as her debut single that the record company felt she had made a major breakthrough. Levine worked further with the Matrix and also with singer-songwriter Cliff Magnus. Recording of Levine's debut album, Let Go, finished in January 2002. Levine released Let Go in June 2002 in the U.S., where it reached number two on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. It peaked at number one in Australia, Canada, and the UK. This made Levine, at 17 years old, the youngest female soloist to have a number one album on the UK Albums chart at that time. By the end of 2002, the album was certified four times platinum by the RIAA, making her the best selling female artist of 2002 and let go the top selling debut of the year. By May 2003, let Go had accumulated over 1 million sales in Canada, receiving a diamond certification from the Canadian recording industry. Association.by 2009, the album had sold over 16 million units worldwide. By March 2018, the RIAA certified the album seven times platinum, denoting shipments of over 7 million units in the U.S. Levine's debut single, Complicated, peaked at number one in Australia and number two in the U.S. Complicated was one of the best-selling Canadian singles of 2002, and one of the decade's biggest hits in the U.S., where subsequent singles Skater Boy and I'm With You reached the top 10. With these three singles, Levine became the second artist in history to have three top 10 songs from a debut album on Billboard's mainstream Top 40 chart. Levine was named Best New Artist, for Complicated, at the 2002 MTV Video Music Awards, won four Juno Awards in 2003 out of six nominations, received a World Music Award for World's Best Selling Canadian Singer, and was nominated for eight Grammy Awards, including Best New Artist and Song of the Year for Complicated. In 2002, Levine made a cameo appearance in the music video 400 Million by the pop-punk band Trouble Charger. I in March 2003, Levine posed for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine and in May she performed Fuel during MTV's Icon Tribute to Metallica during her first headlining tour, the Try to Shut Me Up tour, Levine covered Green Day's Basket Case. 2004-2005, Under My Skin Levine and Burnaby during her promotional tour for Under My Skin in 2004. Levine's second studio album, Under My Skin, was released in May 2004 and debuted at number one in Australia, Canada, Japan, the UK, and the US, the album was certified five times platinum in Canada and has sold 10 million copies, including 3.2 million in the US. Levine wrote most of the album's tracks with Canadian singer songwriter Chantal Kreviazic, and Kreviazic's husband, Our Lady Peace frontman Rain Maida, co produced the album with Butch Walker and Don Gilmore. Levine said that Under My Skin proved her credentials as a songwriter, saying that each song comes from a personal experience of mine and there are so much, sick, emotions in those songs, dot. 
Don't Tell Me, the lead single off the album, reached the top 5 in the UK and Canada, and the top 10 in Australia. My Happy Ending, the album's second single, was a top 5 hit in the UK and Australia. In the US, it was a top 10 entry on the Billboard Hot 100 and became a number 1 pop radio hit. The third single, Nobody's Home, did not manage to make the top 40 in the US and performed moderately elsewhere. During early 2004, Levine went on the live and by surprise acoustic mall tour in the US and Canada to promote Under My Skin, accompanied by her guitarist Evan Taubenfeld. In September 2004, Levine embarked on her first world tour, the year-long bonus tour. Levine won two World Music Awards in 2004, for World's Best Pop-slash-Rock Artist and World's Best-Selling Canadian Artist and won three Juno Awards from five nominations in 2005, including Artist of the Year, she also won in the category of Favorite Female Singer at the 18th Annual Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. Levine co-wrote the song Breakaway, which was recorded by Kelly Clarkson for the soundtrack to the 2004 film The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Breakaway was released as a single in mid-2004 and subsequently included as the title track on Clarkson's second album, Breakaway. Levine performed the Goo Goo Dolls song Iris with the band's lead singer John Rzesnik at Fashion Rocks in September 2004, and she posed for the cover of Maxim in October 2004. She recorded the theme song for the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, released in November 2004, with producer Butch Walker. 2006-2011, The Best Damn Thing and Goodbye Lullaby In February 2006, Levine represented Canada at the closing ceremony of the 2006 Winter Olympics Fox Entertainment Group approached Levine to write a song for the soundtrack to the 2006 fantasy adventure film Aragon, her contribution, Keep Holding On, was released as a single to promote the film and its soundtrack. Levine performing during the Best Damn World Tour in 2008 Levine's third album, The Best Damn Thing, was released in April 2007 and debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200, and subsequently achieved platinum status in Canada. The album sold more than two million copies in the U.S. Its lead single, Girlfriend, became Levine's first number one single on the U.S. Billboard Hot 101 of the decade's biggest singles. The single also peaked at number one in Australia, Canada, and Japan, and reached number two in the U.K. and France. As well as English, Girlfriend was recorded in Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, German, Japanese, and Mandarin. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry ranked Girlfriend as the most downloaded track worldwide in 2007, selling 7.3 million copies, including the versions recorded in eight different languages. When You're Gone, the album's second single, reached the top five in Australia and the United Kingdom, the top ten in Canada and the top 40 in the U.S. Hot was the third single and charted only at number 95 in the U.S., although it reached the top 10 in Canada and the top 20 in Australia. Levine won two World Music Awards in 2007, for World's Best Selling Canadian Artist and World's Best Pop-slash-Rock Female Artist. She won her first two MTV Europe Music Awards, received a Teen Choice Award for Best Summer Single, and was nominated for five Juno Awards. I in December 2007, Levine was ranked number eight in Forbes magazine's list of top 20 earners under 25, with annual earnings of $12 million. I in March 2008, Levine undertook a world tour, the Best Damn World Tour, and appeared on the cover of Maxim for the second time. I in mid August, Malaysia's Islamic Opposition Party, the Pan Malaysian Islamic Party, attempted to ban Levine's tour show in Kuala Lumpur judging her stage moves, too sexy. It was thought that her concert on August 29 would promote wrong values ahead of Malaysia's Independence Day on August 31. On August 21, 2008, MTV reported that the concert had been approved by the Malaysian government. In January 2010, Levine worked with Disney to create clothing designs inspired by Tim Burton's feature film Alice in Wonderland. She recorded a song for its soundtrack, Alice, which was played over the end credits and included on the soundtrack album Almost Alice.In February, Levine performed at the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics closing ceremony. Levine's song I'm With You was sampled by Rihanna on the track Cheers, Drink to That, which is featured on Rihanna's fifth studio album, Loud, 2010. 
Cheers, Drink to That, was released as a single the following year, and Levine appeared in its music video. I end December 2010, American singer Miranda Cosgrove released Dancing Crazy, a song written by Levine, Max Martin, and Shellback. It was also produced by Martin. Levine began recording for her fourth studio album, Goodbye Lullaby, in her home studio in November 2008. Its opening track, Black Star, was written to help promote her first fragrance of the same name. Levine described the album as being about her life experiences rather than focusing on relationships, and its style as less pop rock than her previous material, reflecting her age. The release date for Goodbye Lullaby was delayed several times, which Levine said was because of her label. Goodbye Lullaby was released in March 2011, and its lead single, What the Hell, premiered in December 2010. Ahead of the album's release, Goodbye Lullaby received Juno Award nominations for Album of the Year and Pop Album of the Year. By March 2018, Goodbye Lullaby sold more than 500,000 copies in the US, and it was certified gold by the RIAA. 2012 2017, self titled album. Levine performing in 2014. Three months after the release of Goodbye Lullaby, Levine announced that work on her fifth studio album had already begun describing it as the musical opposite of Goodbye Lullaby and Pop and More Fun Again. In late 2011, she confirmed that she had moved to Epic Records, headed by L.A. Reid. Levine contributed two cover songs to the 2012 Japanese animated film One Piece Film, Z, How You Remind Me, originally by Nickelback, and Bad Reputation, originally by Joan Jett. The lead single from Levine's fifth studio album, Here's to Never Growing Up, produced by Martin Johnson of the band Boys Like Girls, was released in April 2013 and reached top 20 positions on the Billboard Hot 100, Australia and the UK. The second single, Rock and Roll, was released in August 2013 and the third, Let Me Go, featuring Levine's then-husband Chad Kroger of Nickelback, was released in October 2013. The album, titled Avril Levine, was released in November 2013, in Canada, it was certified gold and received a Juno Award nomination for Pop Album of the Year. The fourth single from Avril Lavigne, Hello Kitty, was released in April 2014. The music video sparked controversies over racism claims, which Lavigne denied. During mid-2014, Lavigne opened for boy band The Backstreet Boys in a World Like This tour and played at the Summer Sonic Festival in Tokyo. She released a music video for Give You What You Like the fifth single from her self-titled album on February 10, 2015. The song is featured in Lifetime's made-for-TV movie, Babysitter's Black Book. By March 2018, the album sold more than 500,000 copies in the U.S., and it was certified gold by the RIAA. In an April 2015 interview with Billboard, Levine announced a new single titled Fly, which was released on April 26 in association with the 2015 Special Olympics World Summer Games. Levine was featured in the song Listen, from Japanese rock band One OK Rock's eighth studio album, Ambitions, released on January 11, 2017. She was also featured in the song Wings Clipped by Grey with Anthony Green for the duo's debut extended play Chameleon, released on September 29, 2017. 2019 to 2020, Head Above Water. Levine performing in September 2019. Levine's sixth studio album Head Above Water was released on February 15, 2019, through BMG. The album reached the top 10 in Australia, Austria, Canada, Germany, Italy, Japan, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, and peaked at number 13 on the US Billboard 200. It was preceded by three singles, Head Above Water, Tell Me It's Over and Dumb Blonde, with the lead single drawing inspiration from Levine's battle with Lyme disease. The fourth single, I Fell in Love with the Devil, was released on June 28, 2019. In support of the album, Levine embarked on the Head Above Water tour, which started on September 14, 2019. European concerts were postponed to 2022 due to the COVID 19 pandemic. On April 24, 2020, Levine re-recorded the track Warrior from her sixth studio album and released it as a single, titled We Are Warriors. The proceeds from the single support project hopes relief efforts in the COVID-19 pandemic. 2021, present, Love Sucks. 
On January 8, 2021, Flames, a collaboration between Maud Sun and Levine, was released. I and the subsequent month, Levine confirmed recording for her next album had been completed. On July 16, 2021, Willow Smith released her fourth studio album, titled Lately I Feel Everything, with one of the tracks, Grow, featuring Avril Lavigne and Travis Barker. The music video for the song was released in October of the same year. After announcing on November 3, 2021, that she had signed with Barker's label DTA Records, Lavigne announced her new single titled Bite Me, which was released on November 10. On January 13, 2022, Lavigne announced her seventh studio album Love Sucks. Much of the album was written and produced by Lavigne's then boyfriend, pop punk artist Maud Sunday. The second single off the record, Love It When You Hate Me, was released on January 14 and featured American singer Black Bear. The album was subsequently released on February 25. Love Sucks debuted at number 9 on the Billboard 200 chart and at number 3 on the Billboard Canadian Albums chart. On June 13, 2022, a new edition of Let Go was released for the album's 20th anniversary. The record contains six previously unreleased bonus tracks, including Kelly Clarkson's Breakaway, which was originally written by Levine. On September 13, 2022, Levine attended, presented and performed at the 15th Annual Academy of Country Music, ACM, honors at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee. She performed a cover of Shania Twain's No One Needs to Know and presented Twain with an ACM Poets Award. The cover received a positive reception. On October 24, 2022, Levine announced the release of a single titled I'm a Mess featuring English singer Youngblood on November 3, 2022, as the lead single of the deluxe edition of Love Sucks, which was released on November 25. Da. While promoting I'm a Mess, Levine confirmed she was working on her eighth studio album with John Feldman, Barker, Youngblood, and Alex Gasgarth of band All Time Low. Fake as Hell, a collaboration between Levine and All Time Low, was eventually released as a single on September 15, 2023. On June 9, 2023, Levine did a live collaborative performance with country music artist Miranda Lambert during the 2023 CMA Fest at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. They performed a mashup of Lambert's Kerosene and Levine's Skater Boy. On May 10, 2024, Levine announced plans to release a Greatest Hits album on June 21, 2024. On May 16, 2024, Levine and country music artist Nate Smith released a collaborative single titled Bulletproof that was originally released as a solo single for Smith. Levine and Smith performed the song at the 59th Academy of Country Music Awards. Artistry and Image Musical Style and Songwriting during the 2000s decade, most critics and publications identified Levine's first three albums as a mix of pop-punk, alternative rock and pop-rock influenced by a post-grunge sound. Let Go was classified as a pop-rock and alternative rock album with a slight grunge influence. Meanwhile, the singer was compared to other female artists with the same sound, mainly Alanis Morissette. The album Under My Skin was noticeably darker musically, with heavier production that showcased ballads and rocker songs which incorporated a more post-grunge sound that verged on new metal, while keeping pop-punk power chord influences. The album was seen as anticipating the emotional intensity and theatrical aesthetics of emo pop music before it came into the mainstream, critics compared. The album with similar works by contemporary acts at the time like Linkin Park and Evanescence, due to its new metal influence. In contrast, The Best Damn Thing abandoned the alternative and post-grunge style in favor of pop-punk tunes. The songs were described as sounding like Tony Basil cheerleading for Blink-182, with Levine praised for her ability to combine bubblegum pop melodies with punk rock riffs. Team Pop's impact on Levine's music of this decade was noted, since most of her lyrics were from an adolescent perspective. This made some critics describe her music as alternate teen or teen punk. Later on in the 2010s, her sound went softer and poppier, characterized more by acoustic pop-rock songs and less loud grungy guitar-driven songs that were the signature of her earlier works. With the 2020s pop-punk mainstream resurgence, Levine went back to her pop-punk roots, embracing emo pop angst, and skate punk influences from NoFX, Blink-182, Green Day, and The Offspring. 
Levine possesses a soprano vocal range. Themes in her music include messages of self empowerment from a female or an adolescent perspective. Levine believes her songs are about being yourself no matter what and going after your dreams, even if your dreams are crazy, and even if people tell you they're never going to come true. On her debut album, Let Go, Levine preferred the less mainstream songs, such as Losing Grip, instead of her more radio friendly singles, such as Complicated, saying that the songs I did with The Matrix, we're good for my first record, but I don't want to be that pop anymore. Levine's second album, Under My Skin, had deeper personal themes underlying each song, with Levine remarking that I've gone through so much, so that's what I talk about. Like boys, like dating, or relationships. In contrast, her third album, The Best Damn Thing, was not personal to her. Some of the songs I wrote didn't even mean that much to me. It's not like some personal thing I'm going through. Her objective in writing the album was simply to make it fun. Goodbye Lullaby, Levine's fourth album, was much more personal than her earlier records, with Levine describing the album as more stripped down, deeper. All the songs are very emotional. Ian McKellen defined her as a punk chanteuse, a post-grunge Valkyrie, with the wounded soul of a poet and the explosive pugnacity of a Canadian on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson in 2007. I know my fans look up to me and that's why I make my songs so personal, it's all about things I've experienced and things I like or hate. I write for myself and hope that my fans like what I have to say. Levine on her musical artistry While Levine said she was not angry, her interviews were still passionate about the media's lack of respect for her songwriting. She said, I am a writer, and I won't accept people trying to take that away from me, adding that she had been writing full-structured songs since she was 14. Despite this, Levine's songwriting has been questioned throughout her career. The songwriting trio The Matrix, with whom Levine wrote songs for her debut album, said that they were the main songwriters of Levine's singles Complicated, Skater Boy, and I'm With You. Levine said that she was the primary songwriter for every song on the album, stating that, N, one of those songs aren't from me. In 2007, Chantal Kreviazek, who wrote with Levine on her second album, accused Levine of plagiarism and criticized her songwriting, saying that Avril doesn't really sit and write songs by herself or anything. Levine also disclaimed this, and considered taking legal action against Kreviazuk for clear defamation against her character. Kreviazuk later apologized, saying that Avril is an accomplished songwriter and it has been my privilege to work with her. Shortly after that, Tommy Dunbar, founder of the band The Ruby News, sued Levine, her publishing company, and Lukash Dr. Luke Gottwald for allegedly stealing parts of I Wanna Be Your Boyfriend for her song, Girlfriend. Gottwald defended Levine, stating, Me and Avril wrote the song together. It has the same chord progressions as 10 different Blink-182 songs, the standard changes you'd find in a Sum 41 song. It's the Sex Pistols, not the Ruby News. In January 2008, the confidential settlement was reached between the parties. Influences Levine's earlier influences came from country music acts such as Garth Brooks, The Chicks, and Shania Twain, and alternative singer-songwriters such as Alanis Morissette, Lisa Loeb, Natalie Imbruglia, and Janis Joplin. By the time she left school to focus on her music career, Levine was musically more influenced by skate punk, pop punk, and punk rock acts such as Blink 182, The Offspring, Sum 41, No FX, Pennywise, Dashboard Confessional, Green Day, The Ramones, The Distillers, and Hole. She also enjoyed metal bands such as Marilyn Manson, System of a Down, Incubus, and The Used, as well as alternative bands such as Nirvana, No Doubt, The Goo Goo Dolls, Radiohead, The Cranberries, Coldplay, Oasis, Third Eye Blind, and Matchbox 20. Because of these influences, musical genres, and Levine's personal style, the media often defined her as punk, something she said she was not. Levine's close friend and first guitarist, Evan Taubenfeld, said, it's a very touchy subject to a lot of people, but the point is that Avril isn't punk, but she never really pretended to claim to come from that scene. She had pop-punk music and the media ended up doing the rest. Levine commented on the matter, I have been labeled like I'm this angry girl, rebel, punk, and I am so not any of them. However, she has also said that her music has punk influences, I like to listen a lot to punk rock music you can notice a certain influence of punk in my music. 
I like an aggressive music, but pretty enough heavy pop rock, which is what I really do. Image. I have to fight to keep my image really me. I rejected some gorgeous publicity shots, because they just didn't look like me. I won't wear skanky clothes that show my booty, my belly, or my boobs. I have a great body. Levine on her image early in her career. When Levine first gained publicity, she was known for her tomboyish style, in particular her necktie and tank top combinations, she preferred baggy clothes, skater shoes, or converses, wristbands, and sometimes shoelaces wrapped around her fingers during photo shoots, instead of wearing glittery get-ups, she preferred wearing old, crumpled tees, in response to her fashion and musical influences. The media called her the pop-punk princess and the female answer to Blink-182. Press and fans regarded her as the anti-Britney, in part because of her less commercial and real image, but also because she was noticeably headstrong. I'm not made up and I'm not being told what to say and how to act, so they have to call me the anti-Britney, which I'm not. By November 2002, however, Levine stopped wearing ties, claiming she felt she was wearing a costume, Levine made a conscious effort to keep her music, and not her image, at the forefront of her career. Levine eventually took on a more gothic style as she began her second album, Under My Skin, trading her skating outfits for black tutus and developing an image marked by angst during the best damn thing years, Levine changed directions. She dyed her hair blonde with a pink streak, wore feminine outfits, including tight jeans and heels, and modeled for magazines such as Harper's Bazaar. Levine defended her new style, I don't really regret anything. You know, the ties and the wife beaters and all. It had its time and place. And now I'm all grown up, and I've moved on. Levine has been the subject of a conspiracy theory that posits that she committed suicide in 2003 and was replaced by a body double who had previously been recruited to distract paparazzi. This originated as a joke on a Brazilian blog, but it has since been embraced by some conspiracy theorists in earnest. I in an interview with Australia's Keys 106.5 in November 2018, Levine responded to the rumor, stating, Yeah, some people think that I'm not the real me, which is so weird. Like, why would they even think that? Legacy Levine performing in 2011 during her Black Star tour. Levine is considered a highlight in the pop punk and alternative rock scene since she helped pave the way for the success of female-driven punk-influenced pop artists such as Paramore, Sky Sweetnam, Fifi Dobson, Lilix, Kelly Osbourne, Crystal Myers, Tonight Alive, Courage My Love, and Hey Monday. She has been compared to alternative female singer-songwriters of the 1990s such as Alanis Morissette, Liz Fair, and Courtney Love, earning a reputation as the greatest female representative of pop-punk music and has been called one of the female singers who best represent 2000s rock music. Levine also was seen as a fashion icon for her skate punk and rocker style. Kimberly Shulman writing for The Mail and Guardian has referred to Levine as a queer icon and a sweet spot for those realizing, I like boys and girls. Skater boy, he wasn't, and girlfriend are frequently listed among the best pop-punk songs of all time, by critics. Levine has influenced a wide array of musical artists, including acts such as Tramp Stamps, B.B. Rexa, Billie Eilish, Courage My Love, Five Seconds of Summer, Youngblood, Maggie Lindemann, Tonight Alive, Willow Smith, Amanda Palmer, Misono, Rena Sawayama, Hey Monday, Gray, Ed Sheeran, Kaylee Morg, Charlie XCX, Mercy Me, Palberta, Yul, Olivia Rodrigo, and Kirsten Maldonado. Amy Studd was hailed as the UK's answer to Avril Lavigne. Levine has also had a significant influence on indie rock singer-songwriters such as Pale Waves, Grace, Phoebe Bridgers, Soccer Mommy, Snail Mail, and Liz Fair. On the rise of mid-to-late 2010s emo hip-hop and emo rap, Levine has been noted as an influence on various musicians from that scene, with Nylon Magazine noting Lil Uzi Vert, Princess Nokia, Lloyd Banks, Dick Mensa, Nipsey Hussle, John River, No Name, and Rico Nasty. American rapper Fat Tony explained that Levine's influence on hip-hop and rap music comes because she, Avril, delivered a great visual catchy package, punk music, pop music and skater culture, that describes all of them. Rico Nasty named one of her alter egos, Trap Levine, saying she is a perfect representation of being hard and soft, she hated the term punk, but she was so punk rock. 
A persistent internet meme about a Levine written song called Dolphins has been showing up on various lyric sites since 2007, but she did not write or record this song. The lyrics appear on dozens of lyric sites, and various bands have recorded cover versions of the song that was never recorded by Levine. Levine was featured in the 2003 game The Sims Superstar as a non playable celebrity. In mid 2007, Levine was featured in a two volume graphic novel. Avril Lavigne's Make Five Wishes. She collaborated with artist Camilla D'Erico and writer Joshua Dysart on the manga, which was about a shy girl named Hannah who, upon meeting her hero, Lavigne, learned to overcome her fears. Lavigne said, I know that many of my fans read manga, and I'm really excited to be involved in creating stories that I know they will enjoy. The first volume was released in April 2007, and the second followed in July 2007. The publication Young Adult Library Services nominated the series for Great Graphic Novels for Teens. Accolades Main article, List of Awards and Nominations Received by Avril Lavigne In 2003, Lavigne won an International Achievement Award for the song Complicated at the Sokin Awards in Toronto. Lavigne received eight Grammy Awards nominations in two years, including Best New Artist. She has also received three American Music Awards nominations, one Brit Award nomination, and one MTV Video Music Award. Levine had sold more than 30 million singles and 40 million copies of her albums worldwide, including over 12.4 million album copies in the U.S. according to Billboard, IN 2009. Billboard named Levine the number 10 pop artist in the Best of the 2000s chart. She was listed as the 28th overall Best Act of the Decade based on album and single chart performance in the U.S. Levine achieved a Guinness World Record as being the youngest female solo artist to top the U.K. album chart on January 11, 2003, at the age of 18 years and 106 days. The album Let Go reached number one in its 18th chart week, she held the record until 2004, as the UK charts reported that Joss Stone's Mind Body and Soul took it the following year. She also was the first to reach 100 million views on a YouTube video, with her 2007 single Girlfriend. Levine was the first Western artist to do a full tour in China, with the Best Damn Tour in 2008 and is considered the biggest Western artist in Asia, especially in Japan, where her first three albums have sold more than one million copies, being the only female Western artist since the 2000s to achieve this, Levine is the only artist to have performed at three different multi-sport events, two closing ceremonies of the Winter Olympic Games, Torino 2006 and Vancouver 2010, and the opening ceremony of the 2015 Special Olympics World Summer Games. Other activities. Acting career. Levine became interested in appearing on television and in feature films. The decision, she said, was her own. Although her years of experience in making music videos was to her advantage, Levine admitted her experience in singing removed any fear of performing on camera. She specifically mentioned that the video Nobody's Home involved the most acting. Her first television appearance was in a 2002 episode of Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, performing Skater Boy with her band in a nightclub. She later made a cameo appearance in the 2004 film Going the Distance. The main characters bump into her backstage at the Much Music Video Awards after her performance of Losing Grip. She moved into feature film acting cautiously, deliberately choosing small roles to begin with. In November 2005, after going through an audition to land the role, Levine traveled to New Mexico to film a single scene in the 2007 film, The Flock. She played Beatrice Bell, the girlfriend of a crime suspect, appearing alongside Claire Danes and Richard Gere. Gere gave Levine acting tips between takes. Dot on her role in The Flock, Levine said, I did that just to see how it was and to not jump into mainstream acting too fast. The Flock was not released in American theaters, and because it was not released in foreign markets until late 2007, it is not considered Levine's debut. The film made $7 million in the foreign box office. Levine at the 2006 Cannes Film Festival. Levine's feature film debut was voicing an animated character in the 2006 film Over the Hedge, based on the comic strip of the same name. She voiced the character Heather, a Virginia opossum. Levine found the recording process to be easy and natural, but she kept hitting the microphone as she gestured while acting. 
I'd use my hands constantly and, like, hit the microphone stand and make noises, so, director, Tim and, screenwriter, Carrie had to tell me to hold still. It's hard to be running or falling down the stairs and have to make those sounds come out of your mouth but keep your body still. Levine believed she was hired to perform Heather because of her rock star status. The director thought I'd give my character a bit of attitude. The film opened on May 19, 2006, making $38 million over its opening weekend. It went on to gross $336 million worldwide. In December 2005, Levine signed to appear in Fast Food Nation, based on the book Fast Food Nation, The Dark Side of the All-American Meal, the fictionalized adaptation, directed by Richard Linklater, traces fast food hamburgers contaminated with cow feces back to the slaughterhouses. Levine played Alice, a high school student intent on freeing the cows. The film opened on November 17, 2006, and remained in theaters for 11 weeks, grossing $2 million worldwide. Both Over the Hedge and Fast Food Nation opened at the 2006 Cannes Film Festival, which Levine attended. When asked if she would pursue her film career, she stated that she wanted to take her time and wait for the right parts and the right movies. Levine was deliberate in the role she had chosen, saying, I wanted to start off small and to learn. I wouldn't just want to throw myself into a big part. In August 2006, Canadian Business Magazine ranked her as the seventh top Canadian actor in Hollywood in their second annual Celebrity Power List ranking. The results were determined by comparing salary, internet hits, TV mentions, and press hits. I in September 2011, Levine appeared on the Hub Network's televised singing competition Majors and Minors as a guest mentor alongside other singers, including Adam Lambert and Leona Lewis. Products and Endorsements after the release of my first album, I realized how much fashion was involved in my musical career. Levine on Fashion and Music In July 2008, Levine launched the clothing line Abbey Dawn, featuring a back-to-school collection. It is produced by Kohl's, which is the brand's exclusive U.S. retailer. Named after Levine's childhood nickname, Abbey Dawn is designed by Levine herself. Kohl's describes Abbey Dawn as a junior's lifestyle brand, which incorporates skull, zebra, and star patterns, purples and hot pinks and blacks. Levine, who wore some of the clothes and jewelry from her line at various concerts before its official launch, pointed out that she was not merely licensing her name to the collection. I actually am the designer. What's really important to me is that everything fits well and is well made, so I try everything on and approve it all. The designs were also featured on the internet game Star Doll where figures can be dressed up as Levine. It's fun to be a chick and design clothes and things I'd like for myself. I design things I can't find. Levine on designing clothes. On September 14, 2009, Levine took the then latest collection of her clothing line to be a part of New York Fashion Week, returning in 2011 I in December 2010, the clothing line was made available to over 50 countries through the line's official website. Levine released her first fragrance, Black Star, created by Procter & Gamble, Prestige Products. The fragrance was announced on Levine's official website on March 7, 2009. Black Star, which features notes of pink hibiscus, black plum and dark chocolate, was released in summer 2009 in Europe, and later in the US and Canada when asked what the name meant, Levine replied, I wanted, the bottle, to be a star, and my colors are pink and black and Black Star resembles being different, and standing out in the crowd, and reaching for the stars, the whole message is just about following your dreams, and it's okay to be unique and be who you are. Black Star won the 2010 Best Women Sent Mass by Cosmetic Executive Women, CW. Black Star was followed by a second fragrance in July 2010, Forbidden Rose, which took two years to develop. It features notes of red apple, wine peach, black pepper, lotus flower, heliotrope, shellflower, praline agreement, sandalwood, and vanilla. Its message is an extension of Black Star's Follow Your Dreams, though the tagline for the new perfume is Dare to Discover. The commercial takes place in a gothic garden setting, where Levine, upon entering the garden, finds a single, purple rose. Levine launched a third fragrance, Wild Rose, in August 2011 and filmed the commercial for it in late 2010. 
The tagline for the fragrance is Dare to Discover More, that features notes of mandarin, pink grapefruit, plum, orange blossom, frangipani, blue orchid, musk, sandalwood, and creme brulee. In January 2010, Levine began working with Disney to incorporate Alice in Wonderland-inspired designs into her Abbey Dawn line of clothing. Her designs were exhibited at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in California beginning in May through September, alongside Colleen Atwood's costumes from the 2010 film. Philanthropy Levine performing in 2011 Levine has been involved with many charities, including Make Some Noise, Amnesty International, Erase MS, AmericanCPR.org, Special Olympics, Camp Willoway, Music Clearing Minefields, U.S. Campaign for Burma, Make-A-Wish Foundation, and War Child. She has also appeared in ALDO ads with Youth Aids to raise money to educate people worldwide about HIV-AIDS. Levine took part in the Unite Against AIDS concert presented by ALDO in support of UNICEF on November 28, 2007, at the Bell Centre in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. In November 2010, Levine attended the Clinton Global Initiative. Levine worked with Reverb, a non profit environmental organization, for her 2005 East Coast tour. She covered Knockin' on Heaven's Door for War Child's Peace Songs compilation and she recorded a cover of the John Lennon song Imagine as her contribution to the compilation album Instant Karma, the Amnesty International Campaign to Save Darfur. Released on June 12, 2007, the album was produced to benefit Amnesty International's campaign to alleviate the crisis in Darfur. On December 5, 2009, Levine returned to the stage in Mexico City during the biggest charity event in Latin America, Teleton. She performed acoustic versions of her hits Complicated and Girlfriend with Evan Taubenfeld and band member, Jim M. C. Gorman, in 2010, Levine was one of several artists who contributed their voices to a cover of Canaan's Waven Flag as a benefit single to help raise money for several charity organizations related to the 2010 Haiti earthquake. On September 14, 2010, Levine introduced her charity, the Avril Levine Foundation, which aims to help young people with serious illnesses and disabilities and works with leading charitable organizations. The foundation partners with the Easter Seals, Make-A-Wish Foundation, and Erase MS. Her work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation was the inspiration behind her own charity, with Levine stating, I just really wanted to do more. Levine said on the foundation's website, I have always looked for ways to give back because I think it's a responsibility we all share. Philanthropist Trevor Nielsen's 12-person firm, Global Philanthropy Group, advises Levine with her foundation as well as several other celebrities, including musician John Legend. In September 2014, she launched a personal fundraising campaign for the Special Olympics as part of her birthday celebration. Proceeds from her Team Rockstar event helped sponsor athletes from around the world competing in the 2015 Special Olympics World Summer Games in Los Angeles. The athletes were the stars of the music video for Fly, which was shot in Canada. In September 2020, Levine announced a special livestream concert to raise awareness and funds in the fight against Lyme disease, called the Hashtag Fight Lyme Concert. The concert took place on October 25, with proceeds from all tickets and merchandise going to the Global Lyme Alliance, a chronic Lyme disease advocacy group, and her charity, the Avril Levine Foundation. Politics After winning her fourth Juno Award in April 2003, in reference to the Iraq War, Levine said, I don't believe war is a way to solve problems. I think it's wrong. I don't have that much respect for, U.S. President George, Bush. She also said that she was really proud of then-Prime Minister of Canada Jean Chrétien for keeping Canada out of the war. Personal life. Tattoos. Everything is always spur of the moment. All of my tattoos, I decide that second and do it. Levine on her tattoos. Levine's XXB and star tattoos on her right forearm, and 30, lightning bolt, and star tattoos on her left wrist. As well as having some unique designs, most of Levine's tattoos match those of her friends. Levine had a star tattooed on the inside of her left wrist that was created at the same time as friend and musical associate Ben Moody's identical tattoo. I in late 2004, she had a small pink heart around the letter D applied to her right wrist which represented her then-boyfriend, Derek Wibley. Levine and then-husband Wibley got matching tattoos in March 2010, in celebration of his 30th birthday. In 
April 2010, Levine added another tattoo on her wrist, that of a lightning bolt and the number 30. Her love of tattoos, however, gained media attention in May 2010, after Levine and Brody Jenner each got matching tattoos of the word fuck on their ribs, Levine appeared in the June-July cover story for Inked magazine, where she discussed and showed off her tattoos, including an Abby Dawn on her left forearm and an XXB and star on her right. Although she confirmed the fuck tattoo verbally in the article, calling it her favorite word, she had it applied after the magazine's photo shoot, she added that she eventually wanted to get a big-ass heart with a flag through it with a name. I'm going to wait a few years and make sure I still want it then. I have to wait for that special someone to come back into my life. In July 2010, Levine had her then-boyfriend's name, Brody, tattooed beneath her right breast. In 2018, Levine got a traditional heart-shaped tattoo with then-boyfriend Jacob Allen Munn. French Citizenship Levine's father was born in France, and through Jess Sanguinis, she applied for a French passport which she received in February 2011 in January 2012, Levine sold her house in Bel Air, on the market since May 2011, and moved to Paris to study the French language. She rented an apartment and attended a Berlitz school. Relationships Levine and some 41 lead vocalist slash rhythm guitarist Derek Wibley began dating when Levine was 19 years old, after being friends since she was 17 in June 2005, Wibley proposed to her, the couple married on July 15, 2006, in Montecito, California. On October 9, 2009, Levine filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences as the reason Levine stated, I am grateful for our time together, and I am grateful and blessed for our remaining friendship. The divorce was finalized on November 16, 2010. Levine started dating The Hills star Brody Jenner in February 2010. After almost two years of dating, the couple split in January 2012. Levine began dating fellow Canadian musician Chad Kroger, frontman of the band Nickelback, in July 2012. The relationship blossomed after they began working together in March 2012 to write and record music for Levine's fifth album. Levine and Kroger became engaged in August 2012. After one month of dating, the couple married at the Château de la Napole, a reconstructed medieval castle on the Mediterranean in the south of France, on July 1, 2013, which is Canada Day, after a year of being together. On September 2, 2015, Levine announced her separation from Kroger via her official Instagram account, and they later divorced. Levine began dating billionaire Philip Seraphine in 2018. She broke up with him in 2019. It was reported by People magazine that she began dating musician Pete Jonas in 2020. She later began dating Maud's son around March 2021. In April 2022, Levine used her social media accounts to announce their engagement, which ended in February 2023. Health In April 2015, Levine revealed to People magazine that she had been diagnosed with Lyme disease after her 30th birthday in 2014. In an interview with Billboard that same month, Levine said that she was in the recovery process and that she wanted to increase awareness of the disease. Levine has been referred to as a vegan or a vegetarian, though she has not discussed her diet publicly.